Good day. So this is the final session in a series of videos on the Zambian Tax Benefit Micro Simulation Model, Micro Zamod. And in this session, we're simply going to be going through the model and looking at all of the policies in detail. So we've, before we start off, um, we have our main user interface. And just to repeat some of the things that we've been through already, um, at the top of our user interface, we have our seven tabs, which each open up to reveal a ribbon menu. So if we go to our first, um, our second tab rather, which is display, we don't really use much of these other functions, although a handy one to use, um, especially when one is making reforms and adding new policies to the model, is automatic conditional formatting, as this highlights the differences between the base system and the reform system. So this is quite a handy one to use. We then have our country tools tab, which we've um, already looked at in our previous sessions. And here we can um, use this tab to add a system or delete a system. In our country tools tab, we also have our uprating indices, which specify um, our uprating factors for our data. And we don't um, really use any of the other tools in this country tools tab. We then have our administration tools tab. And one tool that we use here that we haven't spoken about before is our variable to tools. So I'll just um, look at that quite briefly. So if we click on variables, and this is quite a handy tool to use together with um, the DRD, as this specifies all the variables that um, have been used in the model, and in addition has any other variables that one might want to add when um, creating a new policy or reforming an existing policy. So in addition with these, um, with this variables tool, we can also add new variables um, that we want to the model, as long as they um, conform to the Euromod naming convention. So we can, um, we have a list of acronyms here, which we've spoken about briefly. And within these lists, there are various other variables. So we can use this tool to add new variables that we don't have in our model that we might want to use. Or we could use this tool to check um, to check the naming conventions of the various variables that we want to use. So that's our variables tool. Um, we don't really use the add-ons um, tab. Applications, which I'll look at towards the end of the session, um, we have two main um, features of this tool that we use, which are the stats presenter and the open output file, which opens um, our output onto an Excel file. And um, I'll speak more about these when we actually use them towards the end of the session. And then we have our help um, and info tab, which is just like any other ordinary help program and um, also specifies the version of our model that we're using which in this case is uh, version 2.0.5. Okay, so now to walk through the model. So um, we've already been through some of these policies in, a, in quite a bit of detail, so I won't spend too much time of, on them, but the ones that we haven't looked at, I'll spend a bit of time on them. So our first policy is our uprate policy. And um, as you will remember, this policy is made up of one function, which is called uprate. And this, pu the purpose of this function is to uprate our, um, our data set to bring it up to date with inflation. So we, um, as we mentioned, our data set is the 2010 Living Conditions Monitoring Survey. And the default factor that we use is the overall CPI. And then we've also specified an earnings inflator, inflator to uprate um, earnings and self-employment earnings as well. So, and uh, we've also specified um, our inflators, our operating inf inflators for CPI for food items, and we also have our um, CPI non-food inflator for non-food items. So that's our operating policy. 
our next policy, um, which is a definitional policy, as you'll remember, is our income concepts or income lists. So um, I won't spend too much time on this policy as we have looked at it in quite a lot of detail in our previous session. Um, but just to to remind you that um, an income policy, an, an income concept or income list rather, is an aggregate of several variables that is added to produce um, that income list. So if we look, for example, at our first income list, which is IL underscore taxably 01, we see that this this income list is made up of several several va variables, such as income from employment, income from self-employment, -empo income from pension, income from property, and um, the list goes on. Um, and most, um, just to reiterate from our previous session, within our income concepts or income list, we now have um, a several new income lists which we need to add to if we have a reform scenario um, for one of these categories in order for the stats presented to work. So if you remember in our previous session we had a a child uh, reform, or universal child reform or universal child benefit rather and we needed to add we needed to add that to our um, income list for child benefits in the stats presenter in order for the stats presenter to work. So just to take note of the new income lists that we now have because of our stats presenter. And also to reiterate that we can only add to one of these income lists in order for the stats presenter to work. Our next policy which is also a definitional policy, is our tax units or assessment units. So we've already been through this policy. And as you can see, this policy is made up of three functions. And if we open the first one up, which defines the household, um, we see here that this policy is made up, this function rather, is made up of five parameters in which we stipulate the name of the tax unit, the type, um, the dependent child condition, and the assigning of dependent um, children and the assigning of um, dependent partners. So that's our tax unit. Next, we have our constants policy, which is also um, another definitional policy. And uh, we've been through this in quite a bit of detail. But just to remind you that our constants policy is where we have where we specify amounts, um, thresholds, rates. Um, our poverty lines are also specified here, um, which I, I hadn't mentioned before. So here we have um, um, our severe poverty line and our moderate poverty line, which are specified in our constants policy. And in 2015, we can see that the severe poverty line was 152. Um, while the moderate poverty line in 2015 was 214. So um, that's our constants policy where we just have our amounts, our uh, any rates that we have that we use in the model, our poverty lines, our upper limits for our term turnover tax, and any amounts that we assign for benefits. So our next um, policy that I haven't spoken about before are our poverty lines. So this policy is an income policy and it's called poverty underscore lines underscore ZM. And as you can see, this policy is made up of two functions, which are um, two arithops. Um, so we have um, our severe poverty line. And most importantly to note with this, we can only um, use one poverty line at any one time. So as you can see, uh, see our moderate poverty line is currently off because our severe poverty line is um, on. So this is um, what is used in the poverty calculations for the stats presenter. 
and we can see that the formula that is used is simply our poverty line that is specified in our constants, which is um, in 2015, 152. The output variable produced is simply SPL, and the tax unit is then is the individual. So, as I mentioned, um, in order for the stats presenter to work, only one of these poverty lines can be switched on at any one time. So that's our poverty line policy. We then, are, we then have our employee pension contributions. So all employees in wage employment are liable to pay a pension contribution that is calculated at 5% of um, gross salary. So we see that this policy is made up of one function, which is a Ben Calc. And in turn, this Ben Calc is made up of five parameters. So we have our comp underscore cond, which is in, in essence our eligibility um, criteria, which in this case is um, YEM has to be greater than zero. So um, income from employment has to be greater than zero. And in order for someone to be liable to pay um, this pension contribution. And then we have our comp underscore per tax unit, which is in essence our um, formula to calculate the contribution, which in this case is um, income from employment, so EM, times by the um, this TISCP underscore rate, which is 5%. Um, and then we have our upper limit, um, which is um, specified at 796 Zambian kwacha per month. So after this calculation is done, we have our output variable, um, which is called um, TISCP underscore S. And um, all of this is done at the level of the individual. So that's our first social insurance contribution policy, which is the employee pension contributions. So similarly, we then have our employer pension contributions, which will be um, roughly the same as the employee pension contri contributions. So our comp underscore cond is um, income from employment greater than zero. And then our comp underscore per tax unit is um, income from employment times by the, the rate, which in this case is 0 0.05. And again, we have an upper, lim upper limit of 796 Zambian kwacha per month. And our output variable in this instance is um, TSCERPI underscore S. And this is done again at the level of the individual. So those are two um, social insurance contributions for both the employee and the employer pension contributions. So then we move on to our turnover tax policy, and this is our first tax policy. So we've already looked at this in um, quite a lot of detail in our earlier session. So just to um, reiterate, our turnover tax policy is made up of one function, one Ben Calc. And this is made up of, in turn, made up of four parameters. So we have our comp underscore cond, which is in essence our eligibility, and this identifies individuals who must pay turnover tax. And in this case, individuals who are liable to pay turnover tax have to have um, an income from turnover that's greater than zero. It's our first condition. And that income from turnover has to be less than the upper limit for turnover tax, which in um, this case is 800,000 Zambian kwacha per month. So that's our first parameter, which in essence identifies individuals who must pay turnover tax. We then have our second parameter, which is our comp underscore per tax unit, which um, will take our income from turnover tax and multiply it by 0 0.03. And I, as I think I mentioned in the previous session, this um, 0 0.03 or this rate of 3% um, 
in practice should have been added to the constants policy as it is good um, modeling practice to add all rates and amounts to this policy as opposed to putting them in the actual policy itself. So now um, once we've identified the individuals who must pay turnover tax and we've specified the rate at which they must pay um, tax on, on turnover, on their turnover. We then have our output variable, which is called TTN underscore S, and all of this is done at the level of the individual. So that's our turnover tax policy. We then have our income tax policy, which is made up of two Ben calcs, um, which are in turn made up of four parameters. So our first parameter, which is our comp underscore cond, which is in essence our um, eligibility criteria, is simply um, TTN underscore S is equal to zero. And if we go back to our previous policy, which is our turnover tax policy, we see that this output variable um, called TTN underscore S is the one generated from people who are liable to pay turnover tax. So if this output variable, if this TTN underscore S is equal to zero, effectively meaning that people, that these individuals um, are not liable to pay turnover tax, then um, the comp underscore per tax unit is ill underscore taxably 01. And if we go back to our income lists or income concepts, um, we'll see that ill underscore tax, ill underscore taxably, tax, ill underscore taxably 01 um, is taxable income used in income tax policy where no turnover tax is paid. So that's um, our comp underscore per tax unit. We then have our output variable, which will be TTB underscore S, and this will be our tax base that we use in our shed calc um, function. And all of this is done at the level of the individual. So that's our first Ben calc in our income tax policy. We then have our second Ben calc, which is um, again made up of four parameters. So the first parameter is our comp underscore cond. And if we look at our comp underscore cond, again it takes um, the output variable from our turnover tax po policy, which is TTN underscore S. And if this is greater than, than zero, in other words, if these people um, are liable to pay ta a turnover tax, then the comp underscore per tax unit is called ill taxably 02. And if we go again, go back to our income concepts and look at, um, so that will be our second income list. And this um, is, um, our, this income list define the taxable income used in income tax policy where there is turnover tax, so where individuals are liable to turn to pay turnover tax. And then lastly, if we look at our shed calc function, which is our last function in our income tax policy. So again, we've I've been through this um, in quite a bit of detail. So, but just to reiterate that shared calc um, is designed to take a base amount and then calculate, um, apply certain tax bands to, to that base amount or to that income. So in this case, we have our base amount, which is called TTB underscore S, which we've, we generated from this previous Ben calc. And then we apply a schedule of bands in order to calculate um, the overall income tax, which is then outputted to this variable called TIN underscore S. And this is all done at the level of the individual. So we then have another social insurance contribution called the medical levy. levy. But as this was only um, was abolished after 2010, 
um, I won't be going through this policy, but we have modeled it for 2010, um, but it was um, discontinued after that. So now we can go to our first um, benefit, which is the social cash transfer for rural areas. So just to reiterate from our previous session, this benefit is made up of, um, this benefit policy is made up of 16 functions. So we have our first function, which is our def var, which just um, specifies four intermediate, ver intermediate intermediary variables that we're going to be using in the model. So we've got our i underscore rule underscore 12 m. We've got i underscore rule underscore fit underscore four underscore work. And then we've got i underscore rule underscore live underscore score. And then our last intermediate variable is our i underscore rule underscore live underscore score underscore scaled. So that's our first function. We then have our first elege function, which we've been through, um, which basically determines um, whether or not um, an individual is from a rural area and um, whether or not the individual is the head of the household. We have our DHH is equal to one, which is our demographic variable indicating that the individual is the head of the household. And we have our DSD is equal to one, indicating that the individual has been in the same district for a period of 12 months or more. And we have our DRU, which is equal to zero, which is a flag to um, indicate whether the household is a rural household or an urban household. So in the case of the urban, of the social cash transfer for urban areas, this DRU is equal to one. And we can look at that here. So that's our first eligibility condition, which we've l seen before in our previous session. Our next eligibility condition is our fit for work ratio test. And in this eligibility function is made up of three parameters, um, which is our elig underscore cond. And in this parameter, we're looking at two criteria. We're looking at whether or not the individual is the head of the household. So if DHH is equal to one, that means that they're the head of the household. And then we're looking at whether or not the individual um, passes the fit for work ratio test. So if um, D, if I is equal to one, it means that the individual has um, pass the fit for work ratio test. In other words, they're not fit for work or they have members in the household. So then we have um, our output variable, which is generated, which is one of our intermediate variables, which is called I underscore rule underscore fit underscore for underscore for work and then our tax unit, which is the individual level. So then we have a series of 12 Ben calcs. So I won't be going through all of these Ben calcs um, in detail because they, um, the methodology behind them is, is essentially the same. So I'll go through the um, highest level of education in the household. So what the spin calc is essentially trying to do is we're trying to generate a score based on the highest level of education in the household. So we have, um, depending on the highest level of education, we have, we assign a score ranging from minus 400, minus 542 to um, a positive 511. So if DEH01 is equal to zero, this variable um, is telling us that an individual only has no highest, um, no education at all. So if DEH01 is equal to zero, this individual has no education at all, and they are assigned a score of minus 542. 
However, if DEH01 is equal to 1, um, this means that this individual has uh, an a level of education of between grade 1 and 3. So then if they have this level of education between grade 1 and 3, we then assign them a score of minus, minus 364. And then in a similar fashion, if DEH01 is equal to 2, it means that this individual has um, a level of education of between grades 4 and 6. So then we would assign them a score of minus 223. And then again, if DEH01 is equal to 3, it means the individual has a level of education of grade 7. And in this case, we would assign them a score of minus 70. And then if DEH01 is equal to 4, it means that this individual has a level of education of between grade 8 and 9. And in this case, we would assign them a score of 95. And then again, if DEH01 is equal to 5, it means that this individual has a level of education of between grades 10 and 12. And in this case, we would assign um, them a score of 218. And the last one, which is DEH01 equal to 6, it means that the individual has a level of education or the highest level of, edu of education is above grade 12. So they will be assigned the highest score, which is 511. So um, each individual is assigned one of these scores, depending on the level of the highest level of education that they have. And then we generate an output variable called I underscore rule underscore live underscore score. And all of this is done at the level of the individual. So what happens um, is that we do this for a number of categories. So if I open up one of the other Ben calcs, we can see that we have a toilet category. And again, depending on the type of toilet that um, the household has, we um, assign them a score, in this case for the toilet, assign them a score ranging from minus 348 to, three, to a positive 336 if they have um, a toilet with a slab and flush. So we do this for a number of categories and most importantly what happens is that every time we um, add something to our i underscore rule underscore live underscore score we use output add var we use so we use output underscore add underscore var to indicate that we are it's um, incremental so we're adding um, the score from the highest level of education and then we add the toilet category score and the roof material score and so on and so forth. So all of this is done um, to generate the living conditions index which is in essence um, a, a, a kind of a proxy means test. So we do this for a number of, of categories as you can see we've got energy for lighting, energy for cooking, asset ownership in terms of a mattress, a sofa, a TV, a clock and electric iron. So we perform this Ben calc several times and each time um, again this is output this um, score is, is is output add var in indicating that it's being added to the previous scores and the the name of the the, the variable or the output add var variable is i underscore raw underscore live underscore score. So then um, after all the Ben calcs, we then have um, the one Arathob function in this policy, which is to simply scale the score to make it range between 0 and 1000. And we've seen this Arathob in the previous session. So we simply take our output variable, which is i underscore rule underscore live underscore score, which is an aggregate of all these um, categories, and we add um, 1854 and divided by 6.904 and this is simply to make it range between 0 and 1000 and then the output variable in this case is called i underscore rule underscore live underscore score underscore scaled and all of this is done um, at the level of the individual
So then we have our final Ben Calc now, which brings together all of our eligibility conditions for the rural um, for rural areas. So if you'll remember our previous eligibility conditions, um, the individual had to be the head of the household and they had to be um, in a rural area for um, 12 months or more. So I underscore rural underscore 12 M is equal to one. And they had to um, pass the fit for work ratio test. Um, and in addition, um, in order to be eligible to get now to now get the social cash transfer amount, the I underscore rule underscore live underscore score underscore scaled, which we generated in this previous arithmetic, has to be less than 460. So that's the threshold for rural areas. And if um, an individual fulfills all of these eligibility criteria for rural areas, they are then allocated the BSA amount, which is 70 kwacha per month. Um, and then the output variable that is generated is called BSA underscore S. And all of this is done at the level of the individual. And then there's an additional social cash transfer payment for households containing one or more disabled people. So again, in order to receive this amount, you have to fulfill the previous criteria which we've specified. So um, the individual has to be the head of the household and they have to be in receipt of the social cash transfer amount, meaning that they have had to fulfill the other conditions that we specified earlier. And additionally, they have to have um, one or more disabled people in, in the household. And then if, um, and the household lastly has to be in a rural area. So DRU has to equal to zero. So when all of this is fulfilled, then the comp underscore per tax unit will now be called BSA underscore disabled underscore amount. And that um, is the amount that they'll receive, which is 70 kwacha per month. And this again is output add VARD, which means it's added to the previous um, to the previous amount to the standard social should to the first social cash transfer amount. This is added because there's um, a disabled person in the household, one or more disabled people in the household. And again, this is all done at the level of the individual. So that's our social cash transfer for rural areas. And um, it will be very similar, except for a few differences for urban areas. So in terms of the elig eligibility criteria, in this case, um, the household has to uh, be in an urban area. So DRU won't equal zero in this case. It will equal one, indicating that the household is in an urban area. And again, additionally, for our second eligibility, there's another fit for work ratio test and there's a disability requirement for this um, for the social cash transfer in urban areas. So then again, we'll have the various categories that we use to calculate our living conditions index. And some of these will be slightly different because um, we're now looking at urban households. So we've got, um, in this case, we've got um, asset ownership in the form of a computer, a sofa, a table, a bed, an electric iron. So, but again, we will do the similar process um, to scale the live score to make it range between zero and 1000. And again, we'll use a similar process to assess um, eligibility, the final benefit calculated to assess eligibility and the urban threshold in this case is 644 as opposed to 460 in the rural areas. And then we will assign them the standard monthly social cash transfer amount, which is 70 kwacha per month. And um, uh, again, this would be output advard and the um, variable will be called BSA underscore S. And again, this will be allocated to the head of the house, uh, household as previously defined in our eligibility. And again, we'll have a, another um, additional payment for 
households containing one or more disabled people, which would be similar to the one we had in our in our um, social cash transfer for rural areas. So that's um, those are our two benefit policies. We've looked at the social cash transfer for rural areas and the social cash transfer for urban areas. We then have our next benefit, which is the homegrown school feeding program, which is currently not modeled. Um, but we hope to model this in the 2016 and 2017 um, systems. We then also have our farmer input support program, which is also currently not modeled. Hence, both of these are off. Um, and um, and so um, our VAT policy is made up of one function, which is an arithop. And this is made up of three parameters. And this simply um, multiplies the income lists that contains the standard rated, rated items and multiplies it by the VAT rate, which is 16%. So this IL underscore VAT underscore zero one is our um, income list that contains our standard rated items and we multiply this by VAT, by our VAT rate to give us um, our amount paid in VAT, which is our TVA underscore S. And this is done at the level of the household. So then we have our excise duty and VAT on excise duty items, which is slightly more um, complicated as um, we first have um, a number of different um, excise items, which we first have to calculate um, excise duties on, and then we add um, that on, on those excise items. So I won't um, go into too much detail with this one, but just to briefly um, explain what's, what's being done here. So then we have our last um, definitional policy, which is our standard output at the individual level. And we've already looked at this, um, but just to reiterate that um, we have all um, our output at the individual level and um, the asterisk next to the different um, variable groups simply means that all variables beginning with ID, beginning with S, beginning with D, beginning with L will be outputted. So it's basically, um, it's just a, a wild card to indicate that everything, all these variables beginning with these letters will be outputted to our output file. So that is our model um, in a nutshell. Um, I'll now go on to our applications to show you first of all um, our output file and then second of all the stats presenter. So if we open our output file we can choose um, the system that we want to look at. So this open output file um, enables us to check within the data set um, the variables that we have um, simulated and also the variables that are within the actual data. So we have a complete, complete list of all the variables in the file and their corresponding values. So you s if you look at the variable DAG, which is age, you'll see that we have a complete list um, of of the variable first of of the variables and then the 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 values for those variables. So this is a good way, um, especially if you want to check if you've um, performed a reform scenario, if you've modeled a reform scenario in the model, and you want to check that it's worked. This um, Excel output file is a good way to check that your reform has done what it was intended to do because it's got a full list of all the, v the variables 
um, that we've simulated, including all our intermediate intermediate variables. So that's our open output file. We then have the stats presenter, which is a fairly new addition to um, Euromod and um, MicroZamod in that sense. Um, so if you go to stats presenter and you click on that, you present it with this dialog box, which will ask you if you just want to do um, South Mods statistics or comparison. So in this case, we're just going to look at doing South Mod statistics. And if we click on OK, it'll ask us um, which system we want to look at. So we can click on 2015 and it'll then ask us um, whether we want to look at consumption based or income based um, statistics. So we can just choose consumption and click on OK. So once um, it's done performing its calculations, um, we're, gain, we're then given a series of information which can fall under three broad categories or tabs. So we've got information on tax, ta tax benefit policies, um, poverty and inequality. And if we br briefly look at the information on tax benefit policies, we can see that we've got um, information on government revenue through taxes, social insurance contributions and indirect taxes. So we've then got information on government expend expenditure on social transfers. And we, as we can see, the only government expenditure on social transfers is on social assistance. And this is um, 358 um, million kwacha because this is in um, yearly million uh, in the national currency. So if we go over to our poverty tab, we can then see um, a number of poverty statistics, such as the share of poor population in um, percentage, uh, which is currently at 47.1% in 2015. And then we can then again look at this in for the different groups, such as um, male-headed household, male households, female-headed households, households with children, households with older persons. We've then got measures of, of the poverty gap, the average normalized poverty gap. Um, and we, again, we've got a, a figure for um, the whole population. And then again, we can look at it in terms of um, male-headed households, female-headed households, households with children, and households with older persons. And then we've also got the absolute national poverty line. And the last tab we can look at is our inequality tab, which also has a number of inequality um, statistics, such as our Gini coefficient, which is 0 0.5260 in 2015. We've then um, got our um, P80 and P20 um, ratio, and we can then look at the quantiles of distribution and the median of inequality. And then we've also again got our absolute national poverty line. So um, the stats presenter is quite a handy tool to do to calculate um, the effect of poverty and inequality. Um, and um, if you do a comparison, which would be um, if perhaps you've implemented a reform scenario, then you can do a comparison from maybe the base year to the reform year and see the impact. Um, of your reform on all of these three tabs. So on the tax and benefit policy, on the poverty and on the inequality. And you can also export these statistics or you, you can export all of them or group or um, a selected table um, for further analysis into um, 
you can export them to, to Excel for further analysis using a, a different statistical package, for example. Um, so that's all on the stats presenter, and that brings us to the end of this session. Um, thank you very much.